Clark Wilson model. This model is mainly used for providing security requirements of commercial application. At the beginning of uh, module 2, we discussed about the types of security policy where we discussed about commercial security policy. It was mainly uh, developed for providing integrity whereas military security policy provide confidentiality. Here in Clark Wilson model, integrity uh, is maintained using well-formed transaction and separation of duties. So once again, we will revise the three main rules of integrity models. First one is prevent unauthorized users from making modification. BIBA model only address the first goal. Second goal is prevent authorized users from making improper modification. Third is maintain internal bar external consistency. Clark Wilson model addresses each of these three goals. Second goal is achieved using separation of duties and third one is maintained is achieved using well formed transaction. The major concept of Clark Wilson model are well formed transaction and separation of duty. So what is well formed transaction? Well formed transaction. So a well formed transaction is a series of operation that transition the system from one consistent state to another consistent state. For example, if a depositor transfer money from one account to another, the transaction then is the transfer two operations the deduction from the first account and the addition to the second account make up the transaction each operation may leave the data in an inconsistent state this well formed transaction should preserve consistency for example if the account balance of first person is 10000 rupees and the account balance of second person is 20000 rupees if I transferred amount of 2000, 2000 from first person, after the operation, the balance will be 8000 in first person and 22000 in second person's account. This is consistency. So this well-formed transaction should maintain consistency. Second one is separation of duty. The person who created a transaction need not necessarily execute it. For example, if a company receives an invoice, the purchasing officer requests several steps to pay for it. First, someone must have requested a service and determine the account would that would pay for the service. Next, someone should validate the uh, invoice. The account authorized to pay for the service must be debited and the check must be written and signed. If one person performs all these steps, the person could easily pay 20 invoices. So if this duty is assigned to two persons, both must conspire to the defraud of the company. So requiring more than one person to handle this process is an example of separation of duty. Likewise. Now coming to the elements of Clark Wilson integrity model. First one is the users that, that they are the active agents. Second one is transformation procedures or TP. They are abstract operation used for read, write and modify operations. They are written using some programming language. So they are the transformation procedures. Next is constraint data item. This data item that is the object that whose integrity needs to be present. Unconstrained data item. They are data items outside of the control area of the environment such as input information. For example, in a banking transaction, constrained data item can be the account balance. My account balance. The value integrity is to be preserved. Second unconstrained data item can be any data item outside of the control area of the environment such as input information. I deposited a 10,000 money into my account. That is the input information. Okay. I uh, withdraw an amount of 5,000. Okay. 
those are unconstrained data item so it can be the value of the unconstrained data item can be manipulated by users using primitive read and write operation next is integrity verification procedures so the consistency of cdi that is constrained data item with external reality this verification integrity verification procedures always checks for the consistency of cdi so when uh, when i whenever i withdraw money or deposit money the consistency condition is always checked using integrity verification procedures there are two types of object constrained data items and unconstrained data items and two proceed to transaction integrity verification procedures and transformation procedures so integrity verification procedures certify that transaction procedures on constrained data item result in a valid state here is a pictorial representation of the elements of a clark wilson model for easy understanding here is a user or active agent unconstrained data item is given as the input it can be like depositing an amount of i thousand rupees into my account so some transformation procedures are there then we have constrained data item a set of constrained data items are there and a log of the same is also maintained in between the transformation procedures and constrained data item there is a integrity verification procedures that always checks for the consistency so in indirectly a constrained data item relation always exists between user and the um, system so the constrained data item can be my account balance it is direct now let's check how the various data elements elements of the clark wilson model transformation procedure etc work together to provide integrity for that we have certain rules they are called certification and enforcement rules total there are about 9 rules out of which 5 are certification and 4 are enforcement rules we can see the elements uh, in a pictorial form these are the constrained data items the corresponding log the unconstrained data items which are input to transformation procedure then <coughs> integrity verification procedure etc now the five certification rules and four enforcement rules are written here they act at different points the user input is from this point now let's see how this work together so first one is c1 certification rule 1 it says that when any integrity verification procedure is running it must ensure all constrained data items are in valid state so c1 we can see c1 here so c1 is directly connected to ivp so when whenever ivp is running this ivp must make sure that constrained data items are are in valid state so it must start from valid state and after the procedures the constrained data items should move to a valid state that is certification rule 1 now certification rule 2 a transformation procedure must transform a set of cdis from a valid state to another valid state procedure is different first is ivp the second one is tp so here in case of tp a transformation procedure for example i am withdrawing some amount from my account so it can be an example of tp uh, tp is executed the constrained data items and unconstrained data items will undergo some change so at the end cdi should move to a valid state so how they are enforced they are enforced using e1 and e2 enforcement rules e1 says that systems must maintain certified relations e enforcement rule 2 says that system must control users here we can see that cdi is changed only by authorized tp so e1 and e2 are executed with the help of authorized Trans transformation procedures. We can see that 
transformation procedures and constraint data items set set they are, they are mapped in the case of e2 user tp cdi mappings are enforced so c3 c3 supports separation of duty it says that relations between the user transformation procedure and cdi must support separation of duty this is enforced you see e3 e3 means users must be authenticated to execute tp so here is c3 uh, c3 deals with separation of duties and it is enforced using e3 which is user is authenticated transaction based systems log each transaction so that an auditor can review the transaction the clark wilson model consider the log simply as a constrained data item and uh, every transformation procedure happens to the log no tp can override the log and this leads to certification rule 4 all tps must log un undo information to append only cdi the all tps must log undo information to append only constrained data items so that it can reconstruct an operation so when information enters a system it need not be trusted or un or constrained for example when a person deposit money into an atm one need not enter the correct amount however when the atm is opened and the cash or checks counted the bank personnel can detect discrepancy and fix it before they enter the deposit amount into one's account this is an example of a unconstrained data item that is the stated deposit amount being checked fixed if necessary and certified as correct before being transformed into cdi this clark wilson model cover the situation with the certification rule 5 a tp taking a udi as input must either reject it or transform it to a cdi the final rule enforces the separation of duty needed to maintain the integrity of the relations in rules er2 and er3 if a user could create a transformation procedure and associate some set of entities and herself with that tp she could have the tp performed unauthorized acts that violated integrity constraint the final enforcement rule prevent this that's e4 only a certifier of a tp may change the list of entities associated with that tp the same for the separation of duty if a user could create a tp and associate some set of entities and himself with that tp he could have the tp perform some unauthorized act assuming current design and implementation a system with a policy following the clark wilson model will ensure that the enforcement rules are obeyed